You might have heard a lot about quantum computers in the news these days. But what is actually a quantum computer? And why is it so important that many big companies, including Google and IBM, and many universities are actually trying to build a practical quantum computer. Hello everyone, Genius Solver is back to give you some in interesting information about quantum computing, which is according to the experts in this area, is the future of computing. In this series of videos, I'll be talking about what quantum computer is, how quantum computer is different from a classical one, and how we can actually implement quantum computing. But before we start, make sure to hit the subscribe button or you can also click on the logo in the bottom right corner of the video to subscribe. Now the first question is why computers are important in modern science? Well, with the development of efficient computer technologies in the 40s, the solutions of wave equations for atomic systems began to be a practical objective. In fact, in the early 50s, theoretical chemists became extensive users of the early digital computers. And the first wave function calculations on diatomic molecules were performed in 1956 at MIT. Also in 1964, Huckel method calculations using a linear combination of atomic orbitals known as LCAO to determine electron energies in the pi conjugated systems such as benzene were generated on computers at Berkeley and Oxford. I've already talked about Huckel method in another video. You can find the link in the top right corner of this video. Nowadays, modern computational chemistry is helping scientists to predict molecular structures of materials using accurate quantum chemical methods. This can be used in different areas, including drug design and discovery, catalysis, nanomaterials design, protein folding, and many more. Just let's take a look at pharmaceutical industry as an example. This figure shows top 10 pharma companies in 2019 based on their revenue in billion dollars. Yes, with a B. As you can see, the total revenue of these 10 companies combined is roughly $350 billion, which is insanely high and shows how much computational chemistry can be important in this area, let alone other areas. Now the question is, why do we need a quantum computer if classical computers can already simulate the systems we are interested in? Well, the answer is, an exact quantum mechanical solution quickly becomes intractable due to the exponential growth of the size of the wave function with the particle number. Systems with at most 20 to 40 electrons can be treated almost exactly. Of course, there are lots of approximate computational methods such as density functional theory or DFT that can treat many large systems up to thousands of electrons. However, these systems usually fail to accurately describe many interesting and important systems known as strongly correlated systems, and their predictions are sometimes way off. In fact, the idea of quantum computing is not something new. In 1981, Richard Feynman, at the first physics and computation conference, which was co-organized by IBM and MIT, and was held at MIT, gave a talk with the title of Simulating Physics with Computers, in which he talks about why classical computers are inherently incapable of simulating physics and nature in general. He famously said, nature isn't classical, damn it, and if you want to make simulation of nature, you'd better make it quantum mechanical, and by golly, it's a wonderful problem, but it doesn't look so easy. There are also two interesting facts about this picture. First, you can see John Wheeler, uh, Feynman's PhD advisor, a giant theoretical physicist in Manhattan Project, who coined the term wormhole, and also Freeman Dyson, a theoretical physicist with no PhD, who never liked the PhD system in the US and unfortunately died a month ago. There are two concepts in quantum mechanics with no classical equivalent counterparts, making quantum computing fundamentally different from classical computing. The first one is superposition principle, and the second one is entanglement. 
In the next video, I want to explain these two concepts first and then talk about how qubit, which is the equivalent of bit in classical computer, operates in a quantum computer. Till then, stay tuned and make sure to subscribe and hit the like button if you like the video.